All right, so today we're going to talk about the law of conservation of mass or conservation of matter. And the law of conservation of matter states that matter is not created or destroyed in normal chemical reactions. Now, there are some abnormal chemical reactions that we'll get into in nuclear chemistry. In nuclear chemistry, we'll talk about E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous equation. And in that equation, some matter gets transformed into energy. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're only going to deal with normal chemical reactions. So in chemistry, in order to apply the law of conservation of mass or conservation of matter, we have to use coefficients in order to follow the conservation of matter by balancing otherwise unbalanced chemical equations, like the one you see here, an unbalanced chemical equation. The reason this equation is unbalanced is because there are four hydrogens on one side, on the reactant side, and there are two hydrogens on the product side. So we have an irregular number of hydrogens on this side. Likewise, for oxygen, there are two oxygens on the, product, on the reactant side, excuse me, and there are one, two, three oxygens on the product side. So our oxygens are not balanced. The way we correct this issue is by putting a coefficient in front of these oxygens, giving us four oxygens on one side, and by putting a two in front of our water molecule, giving us two more oxygens there. So now we have one, two oxygens, three, four oxygens on this side, and one, two, three, four oxygens on this side. This has also balanced our hydrogens, as now we have four hydrogens on this side to match the four hydrogens on our reactant side. These balanced coefficients show you a ratio of moles, meaning that for every one mole of methane, you'll have two moles of oxygen, and that will produce one mole of CO2 and two moles of water. It's also a ratio of atoms, so for every one methane atom, there are two oxygen atoms, which will produce one carbon dioxide atom and two water molecules. It is not, however, a ratio of grams. So if you conduct this reaction with one gram of methane and two grams of water, or two grams of oxygen, excuse me, you will not produce one gram of CO2 or one gram of water. It does not work for grams. It is only a ratio for moles and atoms. All right, so moving on, we're going to learn some steps for balancing equations. So, there are three steps in order to balance equations. Step one is to balance elements that only appear once on each side. So in this case, calcium only appears once and oxygen only appears once. So that won't be the case here. But for something like this compound, aluminum appears only once on both sides, but oxygen appears several times on both sides. So that's the distinction. Step number two balance polyatomic ions as whole units. So you don't have to be concerned with considering this 12 oxygens and 3 sulfurs. You can just look at this and say that we have 3 sulfates and balance that against these, this one sulfate. And last but not least, you want to balance hydrogen and oxygen last. So let's begin by balancing this first reaction. In this first reaction, we have one calcium on this side and one calcium on this side, so our calciums are balanced. However, on the product side, sorry, on the product side, we have only one oxygen, whereas on the reactant side, we have two. So in order to balance our oxygens, we need to add a two to the product side. However, what's occurred by adding that two is that we now have two calciums. So we need to move back over to the reactant side and put a 2 in front of our initial calcium. Now we have two calciums on the reactant side, two calciums on the product side, two oxygens on the reactant side, and two oxygens on the product side. Because, keep in mind, this 2 gets distributed to the calcium and to the oxygen. Just as a placekeeper, I like to put a 1 in front of this oxygen, just so that you can say the coefficients would read 2 
1, 2 in this particular chemical reaction. All right, moving on, we're going to start with the zinc, since it happens to be first. I picked it arbitrarily. But this zinc on the reactant side, we have only one zinc. And on the product side, we have only one zinc. So our zincs are balanced. Next, we're going to move on to chlorine, because we skip hydrogen, because you do hydrogen and oxygen last. We have one chlorine on the reactant side, two chlorines on the product side. So in order to balance this reaction, we need to put a two in front of the chlorine on the reactant side. Now, we have two chlorines, but we also have two hydrogens on this side. Luckily, we have two hydrogens on our product side, so this is now a balanced chemical reaction. The last thing we need to do is add in our ones as placeholders so that this reaction, the coefficients, would read 1, 2, 1, 1. And last but not least, we'll balance our third reaction on this page. This reaction will start with the aluminum, since it's the first and it's not a polyatomic and it's not a hydrogen or oxygen. Aluminum appears once on this side and once on this side. On the reactant side, we have two aluminums, but on the product side, we have only one aluminum. So we are going to add a two to the product side to balance our aluminums. Now, let's check our calciums. Calcium looks like it's got one calcium on the reactant side and one calcium on the product side. So our calciums are fine. We can move on to our polyatomics. On this side, we have three sulfates. Because sulfate is SO4, we consider it just one sulfate unit. We have three of them on this side. However, on our product side, we have only one sulfate. So in order to balance them, we will need to put a 3 in front. However, the addition of this 3 now throws our calciums out of balance. And so to correct it, we'll need to put a 3 in front of our calciums. So our aluminums are now balanced. Our calciums are now balanced. Our sulfates are now balanced. The last thing to do is to balance this polyatomic ion hydroxide. However, it looks like we have six hydroxides on this side, and we have six hydroxides on this side. So in balancing our other elements or other components, we've balanced our hydroxides. So let's move on to two last example problems. And here would be a good time to pause the video and attempt to do these last two on your own before I fill them in. So I'm going to continue, but you can pause at any time. So I would start off by checking my coppers. One copper on this side, one copper on this side, so our coppers are balanced. Looks as though we have one silver on this side, and one silver on this side, so our silvers are balanced. Last thing to do is check our nitrate. We've got one nitrate here, but here we have two nitrates. So, in order to balance our nitrates, we need to add a two coefficient in front of this compound. However, in adding that two coefficient, we now have an imbalanced sulfur, or excuse me, silver situation. So, in order to correct that imbalance, we need to add a two to the silvers. Now, just to check, we have two silvers here, two silvers here, two nitrates here, two nitrates here, one copper and one copper. So we'll fill in our coefficients and consider that one finished. All right, last example problem. We've got sugar being combined, sorry, sugar being combined with oxygen to form carbon monoxide and water. So we're going to start by balancing our carbons. We have six carbons on this side, only one carbon on this side. In order to balance those, we'll have to add a six coefficient in front of our carbon monoxide. Excuse me, monoxide. Now we've done our carbons, all we're left with are O's and H's. 
The H's look like they're going to be easier to me because there's only one H on this side and one H on this side. So step one from our balancing rules comes into play here. We'll balance our hydrogens first. This hydrogen has 12, while this one only has 2. So in order to get 12 hydrogens on this side, we'll need to add a 6 here. Now our carbons are balanced. Our hydrogens are balanced. The last thing to balance are oxygens. We have 6, 7, 8 oxygens here. And we have 6, 12 oxygens here. So a trick I'm going to use is that I'm going to consider these six oxygens canceled out by these six oxygens, and now I have two oxygens on this side and six oxygens on this side. And the way that I can get these two oxygens to cancel out those six oxygens is by multiplying it by three. And so we'll have a three there. All right, that is balancing chemical reactions. Good luck on the homework. Come see me if you have any questions.